Next, accounting conventions. You have here consistency, full disclosure, conservatism, or prudence. Consistency requires that once a company has adopted an accounting procedure, it must use it from one period to the next unless a note to the financial statements inform users of a change. Pag sinabing consistency, doing things the same way, okay, from one period to another, as we have said uh, nung naunang discussion, in order to promote comparability. Ayan. Full disclosure. Full disclosure or transparency requires that financial statements present all information relevant to users' understanding of the statements. Ibig sabihin nito, kailangan i-reflect mo dun sa financial statements sa kabuuan lahat ng mga nangyari so as to avoid misleading the intended users. Yung term na transparency, that says it all. You have to be transparent. Conservatism or prudence. The uncertainties that inevitably surround many events and circumstances are acknowledged by the disclosure of their nature and extent and by the exercise of prudence in the preparation of the financial statements. So, sa madaling sabi, pag sinabing conservatism, it is the exercise of caution sa Tagalog pag-iingat. Kasi madaming figures sa accounting ang hindi mo talaga madi-derive exactly. Ibig sabihin nun, kailangan mong gumamit ng estimates. Now, in making estimates, you must be careful. Kailangan maingat ka so as not to overstate revenue and understate expenses para lang ma-reflect mo ang more favorable picture. Okay? Uh, but it doesn't mean also that you have to deliberately misstate. Hindi ganun yun. Ang ibig sabihin nun, it is the exercise of caution or pag-iingat. Next, other concepts involving financial information. You have here, substance over form. Transactions and other events and conditions should be accounted for and presented in accordance with their substance and not merely their legal form. This enhances the reliability of financial statements. So, I'll give you an example. Halimbawa, meron kang kaibigan. Meron siyang bahay sa Baguio. Ang sabi sa'yo, Friend, rentahan mo yung bahay ko for 5 years. Yan. And every month, you have to pay me 30,000 pesos. But, sabi ng friend mo, after those 5 years na nire-rentahan mo siya sa akin every month, sa'yo na yung bahay. So, ano ibig sabihin nun? In form, take note, ang sabi ng friend mo sa'yo, rentahan mo yung bahay ko. So, in form, it is a lease. It is a rental agreement. But in essence or in substance, it is actually an installment sale of property. So, in order to properly reflect the true accounting nature of the transaction, it is actually a sale in that a rental or lease agreement. Next, cost-benefit analysis. Ito, napakahalaga nito. The benefits derived from information should exceed the cost of providing it. Mahalaga na kumpleto yung information. Mahalaga na reliable ito. Ah, and some other qualitative characteristics. But you must take note of the cost also. Para makompleto mo yung information, at what expense? The benefit must always outweigh the cost. Okay class, so attendance muna tayo. Please let me know you're present by hitting the subscribe button and saying present in the comment section. Bilang reward naman sa'yo sa paggawa mo yan, I will be giving you a free book. So, wala namang mawawala sa'yo, subukan mo lang. Ano? Say present in the comment section below. I will be posting my personal Facebook account and you would have to message me there. Sasabihin mo sa akin yung pangalan mo, yung address mo, and then yung name ng school mo. You just try, please. Subukan mo, wala na bang mawawala sa'yo. I will be mailing the book to you via LBC at wala kang gagastusin, wala kang gagawin bukod sa siyempre, Pagdating sa bahay ninyo, tatanggapin mo lang yung libro and that would be it. That would be my gift to you for being one of the first few subscribers. I would have to choose from the first few subscribers. So that would be my thank you gift for you. Let's continue with the lesson. Conceptual framework and underlying assumptions. First one, 
accounting entity concept. In accounting, the accounting entity is the specific business enterprise which may be sole proprietorship, a partnership, or a corporation, if you remember. These are your classes of businesses according to ownership. Under this assumption, the business enterprise is treated as a unit separate and distinct from the owner or owners. Ibig sabihin ito, in the eyes of accounting, ibang tao yung may-ari at ibang tao din yung business. Ibang entity yung individual na may-ari, okay? owner or owners, iba din yung business. That is the reason why the transactions, personal transactions of the owner or owners of the business, hindi dapat ihalo dun sa transaction ng business. Okay? The business has its own records. The business has its own books. Next, going concern. Under this assumption, the business entity will continue to operate indefinitely in the future unless there is evidence to the contrary. Ibig sabihin nun, kailangang i-assume natin na tuloy-tuloy yung buhay ng business and it will not stop. Okay? That is only an assumption. Time period. Users of financial information need to make economic decisions at many points during the life of a business enterprise. Ibig sabihin lang nito, kailangan hahati-hatiin natin into time periods, tulad ng sabi dito, it may be annual, yan, ibig sabihin one year or yearly, semi-annual, ibig sabihin every half year, six months, quarterly, ibig sabihin every three months, monthly, kada buwan. Next, accrual. Ito, napakahalaga nitong accrual. The concept of accrual accounting will not leave you hanggang graduate ka and even up to the board exam. Uh, during the first days of your classes, malamang iparecite sa'yo ng teacher kung ano ba pagkakaintindi mo sa accrual accounting. This is usually compared with cash basis accounting. So, we'll discuss this now. In order to meet the objectives of prop reporting, financial statements should be prepared on accrual basis of accounting. Accrual accounting means that income is recognized when earned regardless of when received, expense is recognized when incurred regardless of when payment is made. Napakahalaga. Anong pagkakaintindi mo doon? Okay, tuloy natin. The accrual basis of accounting is the main reason why adjustments have to be prepared at the end of every accounting period. Under this basis, the effects of transactions and other events are recognized when they occur and not as cash or cash equivalent is received or paid. And they are recorded in the accounting records and reported in the financial statements in the periods to which they relate. Mahalaga to, kaya, kaya kailangan basahin natin it's in its entirety. Financial statements prepared on the accrual basis inform users not only of past transactions involving the payment and receipt of cash but also of obligations to pay in the future and of resources that represent cash to be received in the future. Hence, they provide the type of information about past transactions and other events that is most useful to users in making economic decisions. Accrual accounting is oftentimes, as we have said, compared with cash basis accounting. Yung cash basis accounting, madali lang. Okay? Kung kailan mo natanggap yung pera, cash, usually, doon mo i-recognize yung income. Kung kailan mo pinakawalan yung pera, doon mo din i-recognize yung expense. So, tinanggap mo, income ka agad yan. Pinigay mo, pinakawalan mo yung cash, expense ka agad yan. That is under cash basis of accounting. However, under the accrual basis of accounting, hindi ganun yung kaso. Ang sabi, income is recognized when earned and expenses are recognized when incurred. Earning does not equate to receipt and incurrence does not equate to disbursement. Ayun ang tatandaan mo. Okay? So, let us give an example. These are very simple examples just to illustrate the concept of accrual and cash basis accounting. Okay? Very simple examples. Unahin natin example when it comes to income under accrual basis of accounting. Yung cash basis, madali lang. Under accrual basis of accounting. Okay? Income. Example, sakang sikat na singer. Ayan. You were engaged to sing for 
five days straight, walang hinto. Hindi, joke lang. You're engaged to sing for five days. Sabi na natin, two hours for each of those five days. And you will be paid at a rate of 20,000 for those two hours. 20,000. So, for those five days, you will be getting 100,000 pesos. Kaso ang sabi sa'yo, babayaran ka lang on the fifth day at the end of your performance. So, say for example, you are to make a financial statement on the third day, at the end of the third day. Question, magkano ang dapat mong i-recognize as income? Answer, sinong nagsabing wala pa? Sinong nagsabing 100,000? Correct answer is 60,000. Okay. Although you will be paid at the end of your performance on the fifth day, you have already earned three days. That is 20, 20, 20. So 60,000. That is called accrued income. Earnings does not equate to collection. Tulad ng sabi natin, income is recognized when earned regardless of when collection is made. Another very simple example. These are very, very basic examples just for you to get the concept okay, of accrual basis and cash basis. When it comes to expense naman, example, bumili ka ng prepaid loan. Yung card, 300 pesos. Binigay mo yung pera mo dun sa tindera, binigay sa iyo yung card. Kinaskas mo yung card, niload mo sa cellphone. Okay. Under cash basis of accounting, ilan ang expense? Magkano ng expense mo? Answer? 300. Correct. Kung kailan mo pinakawalan, expense ka agad under cash basis. Under accrual basis, ilan ang expense mo? Answer? Zero. Wala pa. Hindi mo pa kasi nagagamit. Niload mo, kinaskas mo, niload mo sa cellphone, nag-text ka ng isa. Okay. At a rate of 1 peso per text, under accrual basis of accounting, magkano ang expense? 1 peso. Okay. The disbursement does not equate to incurrence. Hindi pa expense hanggat hindi pa nagagamit under accrual basis of accounting. A more common example is when you consume resources which have not been paid for. So say for example, again, you have a school at ang pasahod mo sa faculty is once only at the end of the month. And for one reason or another, you have to make financial statements, particularly the statement of profit or loss, at the middle of the month you must recognize the salary expense that has already been incurred pero hindi pa nababayaran. That is called accrued expense. Next, monetary unit. Under the monetary unit assumption, only transactions and events that can be quantified in terms of money are to be recorded in the accounting records. Okay. Next, accounting principles. Cost principle. In accordance with the going concern assumption, assets acquired should be recorded at cost. Meaning, kung magkano mo siya binili, that should be the recognized cost. If a machine is acquired for 150,000 cash, then the cost of the machine is 150,000. Next, matching principle. The matching principle requires that all costs and expenses incurred in earning revenue should be reported in the same period the revenue was reported. Just means to say, that for a certain period of time, okay, all of the income or revenue reported there must also be coupled with all the expenses that you incurred for that period. So, kung nag-report ka ng income doon, lahat ng mga nagastos mo para ma-earn yung income na yun, dapat isali mo din. Okay, the revenues must be matched with the expenses. Next, revenue recognition principle. Revenue should be recognized when earned. There are two conditions which must be present for the recognition of revenue. First, probable future economic benefits will flow to the enterprise. And lastly, the economic benefits can be measured reliably. Tsaga-tsaga lang class A o talagang ganyan. There is no magic formula to learn accounting. 
patience is the key. Okay, class. So, that's the bell already. That's it for this meeting. Uh, so, ganun-ganun lang, class. A few minutes of your time every day. Imbis na kung ano-ano yung pinapanood mo, just make it a habit to watch our videos pa bilang tulong na rin dun sa sarili mong pag-aaral. Why? Kasi tatandaan mo, hindi lahat ng nababasa mo ng mag-isa ay maririnig mo. At hindi din lahat ng mga naririnig mo ay mababasa mo. Tulungan yan. So with that, see you in our next meeting. See you in the next lesson.